Welcome to Boomer Travel Patrol. I'm your host, Lisa Kaslan, and today we're going to India. Not really, but we have an art historian and a travel expert, longtime travel expert, Louise Nicholson, who is going to talk to us about the ins, the outs of traveling to India. And she really is up to snuff on all things art and culture. So we'll have a, a different flavor of things to, to, to go do and go see. So welcome, Louise. Thank you for joining. Hello. Uh, to be here. <laughs> there is no doubt that India is definitely a, a boomer bucket list item, right? So, I mean, once you kind of get to that stage in your life, India is usually a place that, you know, you're kind of holding out and saying, gosh, I really want to go there, but it's so far away. How do I tackle this unique faraway destination? What's mm -hmm. your advice? How do you get started? Uh, well, I think first of all, you need to know when you're going around the year because that is crucial. And you have to know whether you mind about being hot or not. Mm -hmm. There is always at any time of year uh, some really great places to visit in India which are not hot. So that is getting over the first hurdle. You don't have to be boiling hot. Uh, the, of course, the opposite may well be true. Um, I have just done the most difficult trip in my whole life. I did my honeymoon for our elder son and his wife. Wow. How scary was that? <laughs> <laughs> he gave you um, permission to do that? I'm shocked. Well, there was a terrible phone call when he said, Mom, about the honeymoon. <laughs> can you help i said well i can help you if you go to india uh he said but mum it's got to be perfect oh. nothing can go wrong <laughs> and oh. i said but will stuff happens and then it becomes the interesting story he said no mum like he's just come back and it was fortunately perfect oh, even by good. micromanaging levels <laughs> Yay. Um, so what they did because they married in april they wanted heat because they've come from Britain and it had been freezing cold and horrible through the winter. They adore sun. So they were fine with going to hot, classic, super romantic fairy tale places like Udaipur in Rajasthan, where they started for four nights. It's perfect because there's a range of hotels, little heritage ones, up to super deluxe. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you which he was in. And uh, you can walk it's a city that where you can walk which i really like and he had been there before with all of us because we've traveled as a family since our kids were seven and five mm -hmm. so we're used to family travel we also double up with other families i do things when there may be 10 of us 16 of us all going to india together and we all have a ball and the kids go off and do their own things at any age we meet up at lunch we meet at supper and these cities are very safe to walk in so they're great family places so uh, our son did all this and between that they hit the spa fantastic mm -hmm. spas in these deluxe yeah. hotels yeah, they ate good. very very well because the cuisines are different wherever you go and people now know about their india cuisine and they know what is good and what is rubbish and uh, i can always mark people's cards where to find the good stuff and they had a ball they went cycling one day because we can set that up I have a really great guide there who does that. And then they drove to Jodhpur, which is another fairy tale city, fairy tale. And they stayed in a very contemporary hotel that's built within the old walls of an aristocrat's house within the walled city. So they could take little strolls in the morning, in the evening. They could go to other little old buildings which have cafes on the roof, etc. And mm -hmm. They could go to the places I know where they could have their bangles made for them, for, for Sophie. And uh, they could go and get sort of really cool uh, shawls and textiles yeah. and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they went into the desert and then they came back to Delhi. And that's what they chose to do. And in Delhi, they chose to stay in what was an Amman hotel. So that it's called the Lodi now. Mm -hmm. And they stayed in a room which has its own swimming pool on the deck. Wow. And that was the end. So so you can do that kind of thing mm -hmm. or you can do as uh, you know, young, energetic families. You can do something that's a much more modest level in the hotel line. But what I really do suggest above all is that you less is more. 
Okay. And by that I mean stay three nights, four nights in a place. Mm -hmm. Do not think that if you're in India, you are gobsmacked by the size of it. And the one thing you've got to do is keep moving, moving, moving. Because that way you actually don't see very much. It's better to be rigorously selective and maybe go to four or five places well, and then get the down thing. on the ground. Yeah, that's the thing, though, because it is so big. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the, the population of over a billion people, over one million square miles. How when you're when you're building a tour, I mean, are there certain questions that you're because you know you can't boil the ocean, so mm. you want to create the right pond. So, do you go by the person's personality, by their age, by their activity level? How do you home in on that right specific, you know, square mile area? To, to yeah, visit? yeah. So the first thing that is my tip top priority is I do no cookie cutting at all. Okay. Each client is new, separate. They are their individual selves with their own DNA and they have their budget. I can work with any budget at all um, from, you know, maybe you have two, three thousand dollars between you to make go as far as possible. Or maybe, you know, you're pretty comfortably off. Um, and I find out what they do and what their interests are and i find out where else they've been particularly if they've been to southeast asia uh -huh. because india is the fountainhead for so much mm -hmm. of southeast asia so it may be very nice for them if they've been to say vietnam cambodia to then come and see where it all came from oh, okay. um, and if they're particularly interested in crafts or textiles or uh, architecture or food, then I build in these things. And because I've been going since 1980, and I have the most extraordinary friend network um, that can be from weavers um, up to doctors, say, it's very possible for me to sort out things that complement their particular interests. And the other thing is moving at somebody's pace. Some people like to do quite something in the morning and then rest, read, draw pictures, whatever, in the afternoon, then go out in the evening. Other people say, Louise, please understand this. We have traveled halfway across the world. We are going to sleep when we get home. And they want to be at it from breakfast right round till sunset and after. Right, so right, right. I work with people's interests. Good. And the trip is always for them. Good. So uh, I have a question about um, sort of the, the the natural wonders of India, and you know perhaps even you know the animals. You know, God, we dream about seeing a tiger, right? And and, and some of these things, and you know the, the fauna, the flora. Is there specific destinations where that's a very cool adventure? Where would that where would that take place? Yes, um, in the sixties, uh, India began to realize that um, their uh, open land was in great danger because before independence of 1947, they, uh, the Maharajas, the rulers, in fact, looked after their open land very carefully so that it was ready for a certain period of year when you did the hunting. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it was free for all and uh, the, the animals were at huge risk and so were the trees. Mm -hmm. So they started a system of national parks to protect the land. Now, some of these are really great to go and stay in. They have lovely lodges run by very knowledgeable, very congenial people. But India, to go and stay in one of these is not like Africa. And this is something people have to understand. For Africa, you make a list. You go out on your game drive and you tick off everybody. You know, the zebras, the, the hyenas, the hippopotamuses, etc., the elephants. India's not like that. It's much more of a holistic experience. So um, whilst uh, you may be told this is the part where you will see a tiger, frankly, if you will see the tiger, the tiger is probably on tranquilizers or something because tigers need a lot of space. And you may see them, you may not. So it's better to go with the expectation of just learning about the park and you see what you see. Uh, okay. um, and being more open-minded. And then you will probably have a really interesting time. Uh, there's fantastic birding in India. Mm -hmm. There are some places where you're very likely to see elephant mm -hmm. um, and all the various kinds of uh, deer like 
black bark and all of these different things. Mm -hmm. um, but above all, it's a, it's a question of understanding that you're going to enjoy the land and you'll see what you see. And if you see a tiger, there we go. You're very excited. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But, it, but you're not in a calling it up situation. Got it, got it. So what about, are there any things that we should be concerned with, you know, relative to safety and health concerns? I mean, you know, yeah. don't drink the water and, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There are definitely things to do with safety. Um, and having traveled with my family so many times and also done a large number of trips for families, the great thing is that most of the cities, uh, you can walk around and you're absolutely fine. Great. And this includes the big city of Mumbai. Okay. It's they're great for walking, and the smaller cities fine. Our kids have been walking around alone since they were eight years old. Hmm. Um, the main thing is they have to remember how to get back. Yes, home. Yes. And I would say to them, you go together and hang on to each other. Yes. <laughs> um, but um, I think uh, yes, you do not drink the water. You just have bottled water and it's there everywhere. For us, we provide it for our clients. It's always in the car, uh, together with wet wipes and snacks and fruit and dried fruit and whatever people are wanting so that on the journeys there are snacks and things like that. Um, in your hotel room, it's usually given, it's usually provided. In the smaller hotels, it may not be and you just buy it. So yeah don't drink okay. the water do drink absolutely fresh local food mm -hmm. i would say go more for vegetables uh -huh. and the lentils called dal than mm -hmm. for meat okay. um and um always give great respect to indian people because they're very very exceptionally generous and kind and welcoming people who will include you in whatever they're doing. It's almost disarming. They can be doing something you would consider quite private, like a family wedding, or quite sacred, like a ritual in the temple. And you'll find someone will beckon to you and they want you to be included in because this is auspicious that, that they include a guest. Okay. And so the most important thing is to be respectful um, take off your shoes when you go into a sacred building, always. If you're invited to someone's home, never arrive empty-handed. Get some flowers from the market. Mm -hmm. um, slip off your shoes. Um, and in general, be grateful. Um, and Indian people want to talk. Uh, it is a country of huge curiosity amongst the people. And um, many indians are extremely well informed about what's going on all over the world and they're dying for a conversation <laughs> there's a, you know there's a terrific book at the moment out by one of the great philosophers amitya sen and it's called the argumentative indian and it's right up there for indians nothing is fixed everything is up for discussion so okay. this may be a blue shirt but no no it may be a red shirt let's discuss <laughs> So you can encounter, meet people, and uh, and that can be a really big part and an unexpected part of your trip. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the people in the country, the destination, really do make the trip, don't they? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so before we wrap up, tell us a little bit about your exciting trips coming up this year and maybe into next year. Well, I have a truly once in a lifetime. I use the phrase advisedly, trip in December, which is going to be a small trip. I'm in fact leading a longer, more complicated trip, but I am uh, setting up a little trip to enable people to go to see His Holiness Dalai Lama, um, bless a new temple outside Bangalore, and then give two sets of teachings. And that is super special. Yeah. Um, then moving on from there, I'm doing a trip through South India um, at the beginning of next year. That's a perfect time, January, to visit South India and to see the early story of India, which particularly relates to uh, anybody who has been to Southeast Asia, because it's from there that the great temple ideas, Hindu ideas, temple ideas went eastwards um, and it's rich in traditions all these temples are living places that go like mad morning till night mm -hmm. and they have their own elephants in the temple it's great fun oh. and then I'm doing one to the north which is more your classic 
from Mumbai uh, through the fairy tale Rajput cities of Udaipur and Jodhpur and to Nagur, which is a heavenly desert city, which has a Sufi music festival from musicians from all over the world um, each year for three days. It's total magic. And you stay there in beautiful tents, which don't feel like tents at all. They feel like the most luxurious room you ever had. And uh, then, of course, we go to Delhi, Agra and Jaipur for the end. And then this time next year, end of April, beginning of May, I'm going to do a brand new tour to Sikkim, which is in the north, in the lower Himalayas, with a wonderful uh, Tibetan uh, monasteries, beautiful mountains, views of the snowy peaks, walks, flowers, gorgeous people. It's that little bit of land between Bhutan and Nepal. And it hasn't so far suffered from the tragedy of the earthquake of oh, wow. Nepal. So it's very beautiful indeed. Oh, wow. And very unknown, very few tourists. So you'll be right off the beaten track. Ah, love it, love it, love it. Okay. So if anyone wants more information about you, about India, they should go to your site. And that's Louise Nicholson India, right? Dot com? Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so we will see you again soon. Keep us up to date on all your exciting adventures. I shall. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Take care.